Hi, this is Hetty from Nanny's Italian Kitchen, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make pizza rustica. Some people call it pizza gain, but we call it pizza rustica. It's another traditional Easter treat that we have once a year that we love to have. You could serve it as an appetizer, you could serve it as a side dish, whatever you like, just serve it. So what I have to do first is make the bread. Now some people use a pastry crust, you can do that if you like. We like to have it with the traditional pizza bread wrapping. Now this is the recipe for a pizza dough, you could use, and I, which I use for the pizza rustica too, but you could also use this for pizza dough and whatever else. What I have here is four cups of bread flour. I like to use bread flour because it makes a better dough. So there's four cups of bread dough, a bread flour in here. And what I'm gonna do, and add a teaspoon of salt. And I'm gonna pulse that for a couple of minutes. Just to get the salt incorporated in the flour. Okay, then I'm gonna add the proofed yeast, that's 12 ounces of warm water with a packet of uh, granulated yeast. I proofed it, the temperature of the water was 110. And I'm gonna pour that in. Put, put it on dough. If, of course, if you don't have a machine like this, you can do it by hand, but here is the proof yeast and a quarter cup of oil. If you're doing this by hand, of course, you're going to have to knead it for about 10 or 15 minutes. But these wonderful Cuisinart uh, blenders do a wonderful job and you don't have to break your back kneading the bread. I think it's just about done. going to take it out and then I put it in the bowl, spray my bowl, put the bread in there. Now take the blade out because this blade could take off one of your fingers. So you got to be very careful. Okay, put it all together. could get it incorporated together just to get any little lumps and link kinks out. I'm going to put it in the bowl, spray it, and then put plastic wrap over it because you don't want it to get that hard crust. By putting the plastic wrap over it and wrapping it well, it prevents it from getting that crust. So I put the uh, dough in a bowl that has been sprayed and I put the plastic wrap around it, surrounding it so that it doesn't get a crust. And now you put it in a warm place until it's double in bulk. So it, usually it comes up to the top of my bowl here. But uh, if you have the luxury of having a heating lamp on your stove like I do, it does the job fantastically. So here we go. Wait till it's double in bulk, and then I'll be back to show you all the ingredients you have to put together to go into this dough. Okay, the dough has doubled in bulk, and it's waiting there for me. And I'm going to show you how to make the filling. I have here two pounds of ragot. And to this, I'm going to be adding three eggs. Beat them up a little bit before. Mix it around. And to this, I'm going to be adding diced ham. You could use ham, you could use brazut, you could use whatever you want. But I use, I like the ham and I dice it as small as I can. 
I'm also using pepperoni. I diced a half a stick of pepperoni. This is provolone cheese. There's about a quarter of a pound here. Comes out to about a cup. This is shredded mozzarella. A half a pound, a little bit more than a cup. And I use a half a cup of grated cheese. You could use Parmesan, or Reggiano, whatever you want, Pecorino. Mix this very well. And last but not least, I'm gonna add the sausage. You have to get the sausage without the casing. If your supermarket or your butcher doesn't sell loose sausage, then you're gonna have to remove the casing from the sausage and cook it that way. And you get it crumbled up in little pieces. This is about a pound. Looks like it might be a little bit too much. We don't want to overwhelm it with the meat, so maybe I put in three quarters of a pound. We're going to mix this all up very well. Do not add salt, because if you add salt with the provolone and all the grated cheese and all the rest of the stuff, it's going to be far too salty. So this is what it looks like. You're getting your mixture here together. I might add the other little bit of, uh, no, I think there's enough. It depends on if you like uh, more meat. I don't like it to be overwhelmed with meat. Just enough. So that was like three quarters of a pound of sausage. And it, it just mix it really well. Okay, so I've gotten the dough. Look how beautiful that is. I'm not going to use it all. Well, this recipe usually makes two medium-sized pizzas, but I don't need all of that for this here. Flour your board. We're going to cut this uh, a little bit more than half. Okay. Now, my mother, she was a great cook, but she never really liked to bake. We never had pizza rustica. When I got married, I decided I was gonna make it. I created my own recipe. And this is the recipe that I've developed and uh, improved over the years. Now what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put the dough on the silpat. The silpat is the one you don't have to spray, you don't have to do anything. I'm gonna make this as big as I can because I'm gonna put that filling in the center and then wrap it around. So my mother didn't uh, bake. The only thing she ever made was the Italian pastiera because she liked it and I don't know where she got her recipe but I've uh, used it over the years but I also added a few of my own little touches here and there because I like to take recipes and if I don't know how to make something, what I do is I go look for a recipe that I think I will like, and then I improve on it and make it my own. You can always do the same thing. Okay, so this is uh, how I lay it out. Now I'm gonna take this here, and I'm gonna lay it in the middle. Some people put it in a pie crust. I tried it one year. And everybody said, ah, we like the pizza dough. So I went back to the pizza dough. I fill it all up very nicely. The one I make for Easter is twice the size because, you know, it's, you have it, you, you have it left over, you put a piece in the freezer, it freezes very well. Okay, so then you pull the dough over. I try to get it so that it covers everything. If you have a small pan that uh, you want to put it in, you could do that as well, but this way it cooks without being in a pan. You get all that brownness. Okay, so this is the end product. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in the oven a preheated oven for 350 at uh, 350 degrees 
and bake it until you see it golden brown. I mean, you could put an egg wash on it if you want. It's not really that necessary. This is a meal in itself. It is so filling that uh, sometimes you only make small little pieces for appetizers because then they won't eat the rest of the stuff. And you know what? Us Italians, we Italians, we have a lot of other stuff. So uh, that's what it looks like. And now I'm gonna put it in the oven. Okay, so the oven has been preheated to 350. I'm gonna put it in uh, in the middle and then like halfway through, I'll flip it around. When it's, you just keep checking on it to make sure it's golden brown. If you wanna put an egg wash, you can. If you don't wanna make the dough, you could buy the dough already made, but if you're going through all the trouble of doing that, why not make the dough, right? Okay, so the pizza rustic has been in the oven for 25 minutes and I'm turning it around so it gets even, the heat gets evenly distributed. And if you would want to put the egg wash on, now would be the time to put it on. But I, I don't usually and I'm not gonna do it now. So we'll leave it in for another 20, 25 minutes. Keep your eyes on it until it's golden brown. I have taken it out of the oven and this is what it looks like. I had it in for 25 minutes the first time. When I rotated it around, I put it in for another 25, 30 minutes. Just have to keep an eye on it and see uh, how brown it gets. And I'm gonna let it cool off for a couple of hours and when it's cooled, I will cut into it and show you what it looks like on the inside, okay? And so until then, I'm gonna have another sip of wine and don't ever, ever cook any of these recipes without having a glass of wine on the side. <laughs> this is the finished product now. I'm going to cut into it so you can see how delicious and what it looks like in the middle because uh, my family's getting anxious to have a piece. <laughs> so if you could see it, there it is. It's still really warm. But uh, you could have it warm, you could, ch you could have it chilled, whatever you like. This is the end product, and it really isn't too difficult to make. If you want, you could, like I said, you could buy the, the, the dough bread already made, but it's so easy to make it. I mean, why not make it from scratch? If you're gonna do it, do it right. So, and here's from Nanny's Italian Kitchen. As I said before, never never make any of these things without a glass of wine in your hand. <laughs> and uh, until the next recipe, which, I don't know, maybe you could give me some suggestions. I could make the pastita, but that's like a three hour video. <laughs> and I'm sure nobody's gonna stick around for that. Anyway, enjoy. Hey, okay. And once again, we have the Spurs. <laughs> oh, go Spurs! My son Arthur told me to say, go Spurs! And the Giants, more important. And the little New York Giants right there. Go Spurs! Giants. <laughs>